All right, this is the second experimental video of my newly installed uh, valve on my equalizer. I've got the valve off. The boiler is firing now, but it's not making steam yet. Just getting it warmed up a little bit. So this video was a little less long and boring than it, than it could have been. But um, I'm just gonna let it run. I'm not gonna cut. I'm not gonna cut the the video at all. I'm just gonna set the camera on a little tripod right right here, and then I will um, I'll narrate occasionally, like when the interesting things happen. They're not gonna be that interesting, right? It's gonna be like, uh, okay, the cycle guard kicked on. Um, Okay, we're making steam. Okay, the the main vent is closed. Things like that. And uh, I'll keep an eye. We we'll both keep an eye on the on the boiler gauge here. And then, if anything's interesting happening over here, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in on the gauge that is over there at the far side of the main. All right. But. Um, the reason I'm running this second experiment is a couple of people on the heatinghelp.com steam forum, they, they asked me, well, you know, what do you think it would be like if you left, if you had your uh, valve turned off the entire time from a cold start up through a heating cycle and then um, to cool down? Would you, you know, you, some uh, one person thought there might be a water hammer that would occur, and um, another person thought that the water levels and the and the pressures in the boiler might might do some strange things. And um, I don't, I don't, I don't predict that we'll see anything like that because, as I talked about a lot in my last video, I think what as the pressure builds in the boiler. It'll, it'll be presented to the wet return. It'll also be presented to the uh, header and the main, and it'll make it all the way around, as we saw yesterday, is when I recorded the last one. It'll make it all the way around to the end of the main over there. And um, uh, it should do that evenly, you know, as it, go, as it, as it gains pressure and also as it uh, loses pressure. And we're gonna see it lose pressure a little bit here because uh, first of all, the cycle guard turns on every, every 15 minutes for, for 60 seconds. Um, that won't lose too much pressure, but then the uh, pressure troll is gonna, is gonna kick on um, periodically. Um, so, we should uh, we should get a chance to see the pressures go up and down. I think they're going to go up and down similarly in both of these in both of these gauges. And as I'm speaking, we are starting to make some steam. You can see this gauge is starting to flutter, and I can see a, a little bit of um, condensation. Here, I'll show you. Oops. We can see some condensation making its way um, down. My, my main starts off a little bit counterflow at the beginning. So when, 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 there's, when there's condensation happening here at the beginning of it, it will come back down into the boiler. That's what we're seeing here. So it's just starting now to make steam. We just get a little pressure. This is the, this is the phase of the cycle where the main vent is venting. So we're not gonna see any kind of pressure build up during this part. I only have a single, I only have a single Gorton number one main vent. And my main is, I don't know, it's something like 30 to 40 feet long and halfway through it, it, can, it changes from a two inch main to an inch and a half. So it's not a very large main, um, strictly speaking, I. You know, I oftentimes I'll have two number one vents up there, um, but uh, it works pretty well with just a single number one. Um, 
I found, uh, I might as well just talk since we're just waiting for steam to build up here. I found that at the beginning of a heat cycle, even with an insulated main, which mine is, mine is sort of mostly insulated, but even with an insulated main, the steam still has to heat up that pipe as it's flowing. And that effectively slows the advancement of the steam and slows the need, reduces the need for, for a lot of venting. So you don't see me with a big antler full of, uh, you know, Gorton number ones or a couple of Gorton number twos up there. I've, I've timed it out and it's just fine with that single Gorton number one. So I will try to resist the urge just to blather on too much, but uh, we are currently filling up the main with steam. I think the main vent is still venting. And I'll let you know if I hear it close, but it's pretty quiet, so I might not hear it. But we'll see the pressure start to change uh, when that main vent closes. Oh yeah, and I'll, I don't know if I mentioned, but I'll, I'll indicate when I publish the video, <clears throat> I'll put the times of the interesting events on the video. So you could just click in the description to jump immediately to those times and I'll give it a couple seconds lead time on there, right? So if you click to it, you know, you can, I'll say, oh, the pressure is up to one PSI and you can click to that event if you wanna go there uh, to see it. So this is a this is sort of an event. We've got condensation um, coming all the way around the main now. So this is all, this is the condensation from the main heating up that we're looking at here. And uh, basically all the steam that's produced, getting produced right now is going into heating the main up and there's the water from it. So reset us back here. Yeah, main vent's closed. And we can see the pressure is starting to increase just a little bit. So this is the difference between the main vent and now my radiator vents are the thing that is allowing the air to escape my system. And again, like yesterday, I did, I did shut down about half of my radiators, basically all the radiators on the main floor, which are the largest ones. Um, so my, my uh, EDR is probably about one half of its normal amount. So we're effectively oversized here and you can see that you can see the pressure is already building For comparison's sake, we're at um, at the boiler here. We're at uh, just about 0.4 psi, and over there at the far end of the main, we're at just about 10 inches of water column. Uh, I don't again. I don't have my calculator out, so I 
think that's pretty comparable. So we're at 0.5 PSI at the boiler and we're at about 14 inches of water column over at the end of the main and that and that works out right. Uh, 28 inches is about um, 1 PSI. All right, we've crossed one PSI at the boiler, and um, over there at the far side of the header, we are at about 28 inches, just shy of 30. Can, I know it's not too easy to see over there, but that's what it is. And the cycle guard has just kicked on, so it's going to pause the boiler for 60 seconds. Here we can see I've of course, still got my uh, valve turned off. The equalizer disabler valve. And the pressure is dropping back down during this cycle guard time. Just crossing 0.5 PSI and we are at 14 inches over on the other side. So there, again, I, I mentioned this in, uh, in the forum thread today. I just feel like the, um, the resistance to the steam flow in, in this main, you know, at this scale, right? It's a two inch main, it's a small boiler. I just don't think there's a resistance in the main that's measurably affecting the pressure, right? I don't think there's any pressure drop according according to, you know, friction uh, that the steam is, you know, feeling against the, against the walls of the main. Uh, I think the, the steam moves through as just about as fast as it wants to. I mean, that's a lot of volume in there. And uh, I mean, we can see by these pressure readings, as as the pressure of the system changes, it changes 
step for step uh, at the boiler chamber versus the far end of the main. So that's, that's the evidence, that's why I think that. And the cycle guard said everything's okay, so it's, it's gonna be good for another 15 minutes. Build the pressure back up. And there wasn't any water hammer um, at all. There was, it, the system is totally silent. I couldn't, if I didn't know I had messed around with the boiler by putting this valve on here and by shutting off half my radiators, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference except if I was looking at the pressure meters, uh, pressure gauges, then I'd be able to tell the difference because normally this thing would barely make the, uh, make this gauge flutter at all. Right, we're at one PSI at the boiler and we're just crossing 26 inches of water column at the far side of the uh, main. So uh, I noticed this yesterday, occasionally the pressure at the far end seems to be a little bit higher than I would expect, but it's only in the range of, you know, an inch or two of water column. So I, I don't really know what, what to ascribe that to, except for, you know, local variances in the pressure. That's, that's all, I mean, that's the definition of what's happening, but I don't have an explanation for why sometimes the, the far side of the main is, you know, one, one to two inches of water column, you know, higher than I'd expect it to be. And the pressure is building pretty quickly now. We're getting up to 1.5 and we're just coming up on 40 inches of water column pressure at the end of the main. Again, as, the, as you see this needle move, I'm watching the other needle follow right along with it. There's no delay, there's no, uh, no real surprises there. We're coming up on two PSI at the boiler, and we're just getting to 50 inches of water column over at the far end of the main, and that's as high as the Magna Helix can read. Uh, it can it can handle 15 PSI, but it won't read any higher than you know 50 something here. It's gonna hit that top peg, so that won't, I won't be bothering to zoom in on that probably for a while until we see the pressure go down. I think my plan is to uh, 
probably let the see if I can get the pressure troll to trigger maybe once or twice and then consider that the end of the call for heat I don't think I'll actually hit the end of the call for heat I put the thermostat up a few degrees and cracked the front door it's kind of warm out today uh, and since I have the radiators turned off <laughs> that are near the uh, thermostat I don't think I'm gonna be getting it's not gonna be getting too much warmer there but uh, after it hits the pressure troll a couple times I'll say all right that that's basically a call for heat uh, nothing more to see here is what I'm gonna be thinking and then I'll let it and then I'll turn it off here at the switch downstairs here in the basement and I'll let it I'll let the pressure all come out and uh, we'll see if anything weird happens but again I, I just don't think anything weirds gonna happen but I'd love to be surprised. And we're up over a two and a half PSI now at the boiler. And unreadable, but assumed to be two, over two and a half over at the far side of the main. And we're at three PSI, which is the gauge limit on my on my boiler gauge here, but it seems to go pretty fine. <laughs> it seems to go pretty good up to, I don't know what it is, three or five or whatever. By the, or excuse me, four or five by the time it swings around to the bottom there. And uh, again, we'll see when this, this pressure troll kicks in. Uh, yesterday, I think I think we were about at five before it before it kicked on, and it really should have kicked on around around uh, three and a half. So I've got a little bit lower today, and it should it should kick on at at three, which means it'll probably kick on somewhere around four four and a half. Take a look at the, and see what I see when I move in a little bit even. This, this, this sight glass is kind of my favorite one because it lets you see something that's going on. These ones, these are really boring, <laughs> usually. I mean, once, once the, once these pipes, these near boiler pipes get clear or get hot they don't condense very much so you can just see a little condensation dripping down that one maybe I don't know if you can see it in the camera but I can see a little bit of condensation dripping down very little very little here you know this is this is the when the steam is the steam's pretty hot coming out of here and so there's even though this is uninsulated there's just not that much condensation or any condensation that there is might get turned back into steam again before it really can run back into the boiler so those are boring but this one is more interesting because you can see you can you can see exactly how much condensation is flowing I mean I don't know exactly how much but you, you can you can get an idea of how much is raining down along the uh, on the walls of that sight glass there 
So I always thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to see if I could set up a, um, a water volume gauge on it. I thought that'd be cool to be able to see, you know, measure the condensation as the condensate as it as it returns to the boiler. I could do it with the math. I know the ratings of the boiler. I could look at how much fuel is getting burned and the efficiency. And I could I could calculate it that way. But that's no that's not as fun as seeing the actual amount of water ticking over a meter. But I couldn't find like a low you know, a really like a low flow kind of accurate water volume meter or flow meter that would be suitable for this so I never I never did so now okay so here we are we're pegged we're, we're all the way around we're pegged at this at the zero peg and the damn pressure troll still hasn't kicked off you know Honeywell you just you just disappoint people so I'm, I'm actually gonna there's no sense sitting here watching it do nothing so I'm gonna I'm gonna lower it until it kicks off. So we're it's down to coming approaching up oh, there it is. So I was approaching two on the scale on the front. And um, my flu damper has just rotated. The pressure has still got to be around five at least five psi I guess. Oh, the pressure troll is such a disappointment. You know, I've got it set on two. There's a one differential on the dial inside, so it should shut off at three. And here it is. Here it is shutting off at around five or, or more. And it's supposed to cut back in at two. And I assume it's going to be somewhere around three. But everything's perfectly quiet. I can't hear a single sound. I hear an occasional very quiet glug in the boiler, like water traveling somewhere and water is returning to the boiler right now it's not making steam and the condensation is still pouring into it so that's all i'm hearing though the uh, hartford loop is hot it took quite a while for it to get hot just now it's like feels pretty much steam hot And the, the equalizer here, is, look, <clears throat> I can still hold it. It's warm, but it's not nearly steam hot up here. And that makes sense because with this valve shut, there's an air cushion here that's keeping the steam away. Up here, it's quite a bit hotter. <laughs> up here, it's steam hot. But down here, the, the air cushion is still uh, keeping it cool. Interesting. Okay, well, we're down to down to approaching two and a half. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, it's been 15 minutes. I just heard the um, cycle guard kick on, so I'm not going to be able to get an accurate measurement of when the pressure troll cut-in is occurring because the cycle guard is doing its check. So, so much for that, but... Uh, doesn't much matter to me because when I run this boiler, the, the, the pressure troll never, ever, ever is what turns it off. I have a, I have this. This is a Dwyer low pressure switch. And I've got it set for something like 10 inches of water column. And normally, right now I've got it disabled for this test. But normally, if my boiler gets up to 10 inches of water column, I 
this triggers a timer and it shuts off my call for heat for 10 minutes. Because I don't like the boiler running when, when the pressure is built up at all in my system. But that's a story for another video. All right, the cycle guard said everything was okay, so it let the boiler turn back on and it'll start making steam again. It got down to two PSI. For this one, I'm getting a little bit bored and I'm sure you are too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust the pressure troll lower, <clears throat> excuse me, lower down to, I don't know, something like one and a half. So we'll get to see the pressure troll kick in and do its thing a little quicker this time. No need to run my pressure up again all the way to five, I don't think. Everybody is satisfied that my boiler didn't make any water hammer or any weird events occurred during that first run up to approximately five PSI. So. I think that is the boring result that um, that I was expecting. I don't know about all of you, but that's what happened. up to three and my pressure troll is set below two maybe it's right around two plus one differentials it should be it should be cutting out any time or already cut out but it's probably gonna have to go up another half psi before that thing cries uncle here. It's hard to see the magnahelic on the camera because it's fogging up because the I don't have a pigtail on it or anything and, and it, given its position it might be letting condensation sort of pour into it so it's getting a little foggy but that's no big deal I've had that happen before but you see the condensation's coming down as normal the pressure troll did just kick in which is great. At about, oh, about three and a half or so PSI. And this time we'll get to see what the cut in is gonna be. I bet it's gonna be about two and a half. And uh, this is, if you're not familiar, this is what an oversized boiler, this is how an oversized boiler operates. It fires for a few minutes and the pressure climbs up pretty quickly and, and then the pressure control says cut it out and um, it stops for a while till the pressure drops and then it starts up again, which I'm of a mixed mind about it. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't really waste I don't think it wastes that much fuel. Everything stays hot, you know, in between these firings. The stack stays hot, the boiler stays hot, the steam is dissipating, but there's still there's still steam in the system. That's why the pressure is reading, you know, right now about 2.7 psi. It just isn't burning fuel. So yes, it is a cycle on the on the gas control valve. But that thing's rated for like a couple hundred thousand cycles over its lifetime, which is going to be years. So you can get by if you're oversized. As long as your main venting is as good as it needs to be, 
and your radiator venting is fine. You can be okay oversized, but it is nice to keep the pressures lower. Everything, everything's nicer with the pressure lower. You have fewer leaks of steam and, and uh, water at the valves and stuff. All the valves last longer. All of the vents are going to last longer. There's just less, pre less pressure on them. Um, everything's quieter. Uh, you don't hear the boiler kicking on and off, on and off. I mean, I do every 15 minutes because of the cycle guard, but you don't, uh, you don't go, oh, there's the boiler cycling again. It's just nice to have it call for heat and then make the heat. All right, so I hear the damp, the flue damper opening up, and that tells me the pressure troll let loose at around two psi. And so it's going to start steaming again. Now, just for fun this time, <laughs> fun, right? Um, I'm going to take I'm going to take the pressure troll to its very bottom setting. And when you do this, you see I'm turning it and, and, this, and it's lowering. You don't want to go past the bottom. So right there is the bottom. And that's it. If you go past the bottom very far, you unscrew the spring or the mechanism off the inside of the thing. And it's a little bit of a pain to hook back up. It's no big, this doesn't break it or anything, but you have to hook it back up correctly. Otherwise it won't uh, what will it do? It won't. Typically, it won't come. It won't. It won't cut back in. So you, you your boiler won't fire if you leave it in that state. And uh, okay, the pressure troll kicked off. Now this is actually not too too bad. It kicked off just below two psi. And at the bottom of the pressure troll, it's it's supposed to be 0. 0.5 psi. And then with the differential, it's one. So the cutout should happen at 1.5. So instead of 1.5, it cut out at two. That's not horrible, pressure troll. Good job. <laughs> You're just off by one half of a PSI right now. I think it was off by more when I had it set higher, which could definitely be because that spring inside there is by no means a precision uh, device. <laughs> the, the pressure troll is looking very um, crude when you open it up and look inside there. But uh, at the bottom of the scale, it cut out at two. That's pretty good. And if you do have an oversized boiler and a pressure troll, you know, run it to the bottom. Don't think, in my opinion, don't think that you're like saving or making things better by bumping it up higher so that the cycles take longer. You're just burning fuel to add pressure to a system, for what purpose? Your radiators are, are condensing as fast as they can. You've got too much steam production. And so to just build pressure in your system with the fuel burning that whole time, it's not making your house warmer any faster. So, okay, I gotta say this because someone will call me on it. It's making your house warmer a little tiny bit faster because as the pressure goes up, the temperature of the steam increases, right? But it's not very much. It's a few degrees. So instead of 212 degree radiators, you might have, I don't know, 215 or 217 or something. It's, it's not going to make that much difference. It's far better to have this thing sitting here not burning fuel like it is right now. There's still steam in the system. There's still condens condensation occurring. There's the water. You know there's still steam in the system because we can see it on the pressure gauge. So your radiators are taking on the steam they can take on. There's no benefit to burning your burner longer, in my opinion, on this. So just run it down to the bottom. Don't mess around. There's no reason for it. And if you have at your disposal a... Vapor stat. Oh, something just. Oh, that's my uh, my main vent. Just I think let go over there and just let some air come in. So we're coming into we're coming into vacuum a little bit. 
I mean, we're not at vacuum yet, but we're, um, something over there made a little bit of noise. I think it's my main vent was sort of making, was breathing a little bit. Like it might've gotten cooled off and opened up a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, if you got a, if you got a vapor stat, set it pretty low too, because there's just no point in building this pressure. That's my opinion. All right, and the the cut in is uh, just a, just a hair under 0. 0.5, and that actually is what it's what it's indicated here. That's what I have it set at. So this pressure troll at the bottom of its range is is doing pretty good. It's pretty awesome. And uh, as far as my part of the experiment, I think that's going to be about it. The um, The water level never made an appearance here, so there's there's never any you know uh, deficit of pressure over here that would allow that water to rise that occurred, and uh, yeah, so just for uh, grins, I'll let it go. I'll let it go one more cycle here. I'll let it cut out one more time, and then I'll flip the switch off to indicate uh, the end of the call for heat, and then we'll just let it go down to zero PSI everywhere. And, um, you know, see if anything crazy happens, see if anything blows up here at the Hartford Loop equalizer section where I have my equalizer valve turned off. Back, back just over one psi, and the at the far end of the main there, I can see now that's read the magnahelic is in range again, so it's reading like 32 uh, inches of water column, and it's rising just as this needle's rising. So we're coming up on 1.5 again, and we're approaching 40 inches over on the magnahelic. So. Boring, like I said, everything's as expected here. Now, one thing, <laughs> I guess I could say, I can't leave this, I can't leave this off for the long term because what'll happen is this will fill with water, this will fill with condensation. And eventually the whole header would fill with condensation. Um, Especially being a drop header, it, the whole, the whole, you know, the, the whole up and down, it would fill up all the way to the top of the drop header with condensation. And because um, there's, I don't have a drip anymore. This is my, you know, this is my drip off of the header. So it's not a long-term thing I can do. It's just for these short-term tests. But uh, okay, there goes the pressure troll again. I'm going to reach up here and turn off turn off the uh, switch on the boiler and we're going to watch the pressure come down to zero. This will be very this will be like real paint dry situation. Just for a change of pace, I'll walk, we'll set it up here on the Set it up here on the Magna Helic. Oh, that's not even working. Let me see if I turn off this light. Yeah. Can you see it? It's not too, uh, not too visible, but you can see the orange needle dropping. Try to make this easier. There. Yeah, now you can see it.
I can just hear those sort of quiet, very quiet, gentle gurgling sound from the boiler the, of the, uh, I believe it's just the condensation coming back into the boiler. Real quiet kind of, uh, I don't know, the sound of a cooling boiler, I guess. Yeah, do you hear that? Yeah, that's my um, that's my main vent opening. And it's making a little bit of a hissing sound. So right now it's letting out. It opened because it got cool, and now it's letting the um, the last of the pressure out of my system. Pressure is also going away because the remaining steam upstairs, you know, is uh, is condensing. The uh, main vent stopped hissing. The pressure's too low to push the air past the, condens the condensation that's in it, I think. We're down to like three inches of water column in the entire system right now. These Magna Helix are great, by the way. Ex extremely accurate. And they can they can take up to 15 psi. So if your system gets really high pressure, it won't hurt it. And uh, it is good to I think it is good generally to put a um, a valve underneath them. But um, but I know Chris runs his all the time, exposed to pressure, and it seems to do fine. Mine. I get mine cheap on eBay, mostly used, and, uh, and they're older, and I think they're just more prone to leaking. So they'll let uh, they'll let steam come into them if I leave them on, you know, during a full call for heat. So now, it's interesting. I I expected us to go to. I expected us to go to. Um, vacuum but it didn't occur and i don't know if it's because i have like half of my radiators shut off or or what exactly but um normally in, a, in my normal call for heat i i will go to a vacuum uh at least for a little while a couple minutes but that's it we're at zero here's the um Here's the valve on my uh, equalizer. That's the end of this experiment. Like it was quiet, it was no problem. Now watch, I think when I when I do this, I might re when I open it, I m you might hear some water get released because there should be condensation that made its way down here during that. It was about, it was close to an hour that it's been running and I've been recording about 50 minutes so far. So let's see if we hear some water come back into the boiler when I open this. Yeah, there it goes. You can see it on the sight glass bobbing a little bit. Yeah, so there was some water here. 
And uh, when I released it, it just it came down and it and it went back into the boiler. Based on what my sight glass graduation says, it was uh, it was maybe about a quart that was in there, or a little bit less. And I don't see any. Oh yeah, there's still and there's still water coming in from the system. It takes it takes quite a few minutes for all the all the condensation to come back from all parts of the system. This is a two-story house with something like I think seven radiators. And this and the pitch on these pipes that feed the radiators, it's it's all very gently, you know, it's a very gentle pitch. What is it supposed to be? Like a quarter inch per foot or something. Is that right? So they don't and I don't have any low spots that I know of because I don't have any water hammer. There's no low spots that hold water. So it takes quite a while for all the water to come back to the system. It, it does this for several minutes after every call for heat. But, um, but that's it. Uh, end of the experiment. I'll, like I said, I'll post this tonight. I'm not going to edit it or anything. I'm just going to upload it as it is. And then I'll, I'll put in the description... Except you're at the end of the video now, so it doesn't make sense that I'm telling you this. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to put in the description links to the sort of interesting things that occurred during this uh, during this experiment, and um, I'm going to put I'll post the video on the same thread as the other video. I don't need to make another whole thread. People are sick of hearing about the uh, equalizer, I'm sure. But uh, thanks for. Um, Thanks for watching and um, leave a comment on the video if you want to or on the thread at heatinghelp.com steam forum called Strictly Steam. Thanks again and um, talk to you next time.